Hello, welcome to this third video on arc length. In this video, we bridge the gap between arc length and curvature. We want to look at arc length from a different perspective. So far, we've just been given a function in, in terms of time, and we've just been integrating, and you know, after finding the velocity and the magnitude of velocity, integrating, able to calculate the arc length with no trouble. Well, now we want to change our perspective and, and, and create a function for the arc length. So we'll have some starting time t and um, some starting time a, and then the ending time is going to vary. So before we had a definite starting time, definite ending time, we integrated from a to b, we got the arc length. So now the input will be the ending time and the output will be the arc length traveled. The u is a dummy variable. Um, you don't want to put a t inside the integral and a t as a, as a bound for the integral. So u is just a dummy variable there. So you give me a time t, and I'll tell you how far you've traveled. So input is time, output is arc length. It's the arc length function. You see, normally we're given position function as an as a function of time time is your input but there's something that's kind of odd about that it's like you're driving along a, a road and you want to know where you're at so to figure out where you're at you look at the clock after a certain time t is passed you're trying to figure out where you're at this doesn't seem right if you want to figure out where you're at what do you do in the car? You look at the odometer. You're looking for how many, how many miles you've traveled. You want to know where you're at based on how many miles you travel. And so we're going to then think about recasting our position function, not to be a function of time, but to be a function of distance traveled. Um, we're using the letter S for arc link. Okay. And so we have to make a connection between S and T. S is going to be our new input variable. T is not going to be the input variable anymore. And so we have to make a connection between S and T somehow. And once we get that connection, we can replace all the T's with the formula that will replace it having S's in it. Okay. It's usually a hard thing to do, but the definition of curvature is built off of having a good grasp of this arc length function. Okay. Uh, let's see an example on our um, easier function, the helix. This isn't the standard helix. Standard helix has the, the t variable, um, the function growing in terms of t uh, and z. Here we've just switched it around, so it's uh, still wrapping around the unit uh, with the, with the radius 3, but uh, wrapping around the y-axis instead of the z-axis. Okay, and we're going to re-parameterize. Instead of having this as a function of t, we want to have it as a function of s arc length. And the connecting formula is the arc length function. Well, you take the derivative, 3 cosine t, 4, negative 3 sine t. You take the magnitude. This is the same one we had in a previous example, but a little jumbled up, but the magnitude is 5. And so you integrate 5 but now, instead of going from some definite, um, what did we do last time? Zero to eight. Uh, now we're going from zero to t. Okay. So you give me a t, and I'll spit out how far you travel. Okay. Basically, what's going on is that for every, it's like you're almost on a straight road. For every for every um, time interval t, you've traveled five, you know, whatever units, and so. Um, 5t is your formula. S equals 5t. When t was 8, we traveled 40 units. Okay. So this is your connection. This is your formula that connects S to t. It says that the S, the distance travel, is equal to 5 times the time. So we want to flip that and replace all of our t's with s's. If s equals 5t, then t equals s over 5. We take the position function, 
rip out all the T's and put in S over fives. Three sine S over five, four times S over five, three cosine S over five. Now it's a function of arc length. When I've traveled five pi as a distance, I can figure out where I'm at. R of five pi, not T, not T, distance five pi. Okay. At my starting point, T equals zero. I travel along the road, five pi units. I know where I'm at by plugging in five pi. The fives cancel out, three sine pi, four pi, three cosine pi, and we end up with a zero, a four pi, and a negative three. That's where you're at after traveling five pi units. Okay. The visual, very helpful. Is it gonna play? Nice. So you start at t equals zero. Uh, I believe that is the, oh, not quite the origin. Um, you're at one in terms of z. But then um, this is like a helicopter view. You're actually uh, spiraling around that y axis in green there. And uh, can I play it again? Oh, good, I have to just go back. Okay. So, um, so um, when, t when s is equal to 5 pi, when you've traveled 5 pi units, I wish I can stop the uh, animation right at, sorry, right when you get past 60 and you're on the y-axis, it looks like you're on the y-axis, but you're not. Um, that is um, going to be 5 pi units down the road. And your position is 0 for x, 4 pi for y, and negative 3 for, um, for z. That's your, that's your actual location. All right. Curvature is based off of having your input be arc length, not time. And so we're going to spend maybe a video or two trying to detangle that. We want the input to be time. Every function that we give, a vector function, it's a parameter time, not a parameter arc length. Okay. Let's go ahead and define curvature. Okay. And uh, let's just give the definition of it, and then we'll stop the video there. So in curvature, we're not measuring how long we traveled along the curve, like arc length. We are measuring the degree of bend, how quickly the curve changes direction at a particular point, okay, it's the bendiness, how sharp the bend is, a measurement of how sharp the bend is, curvature is the name of it. I have this curve here and I have two points labeled P and Q. One point has a much sharper bend than the other point. The curvature at P is much, much more than the curvature at Q. If the curve is flat, there's not much curvature there. There's not much bend. But if the curve has this turn to it, the bendiness, the curvature is a larger value. Now, the definition. Well, the symbol for curvature is the Greek letter kappa. That's the lowercase version of it. My favorite Greek letter. Um, and so we have to get a unit tangent vector and the arc length parameter to get the definition. All right. So officially curvature is the magnitude of the rate of change of the unit tangent vector, not with respect to time, but with respect to the arc length parameter S. That's why we spent all that time talking about it. So here's a curve. Okay. And here's a unit tangent vector at a particular point. Move along the curve, move, change the arc length, that's still the same tangent vector, but that's not, that's not your current tangent vector. You want to measure as you moved along the curve, how did your tangent vector change? So as delta S, as S changed, how did capital T react to that? So here's the actual tangent vector in green there at that new point. And we want to measure how 
the change is. From the red to the green, the difference there is the blue. That's the change in tangent vector due to the change in arc length parameter. And that is curvature. D capital T, DS, or T prime of S. Now, capital T means unit tangent vector. The derivative of the unit tangent vector as S is changing, not T. All right, great. So in the next video, we're going to hopefully make it through in one video the, the better formulation of curvature so it can be in terms of time. The curve comes at you in terms of time. You should be able to calculate curvature in terms of time. Um, but this is the definition of curvature. And from here, we're going to eventually make our way to the actual formula that just involves velocity and acceleration vectors. All right. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakaya Rimmer, here helping you through this multivariable calculus journey. Please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, comment down below. Like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.